Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well, may peace and blessings be upon our prophet, his family, and all his companions. So I had some ideas that I wanted to run by you. So as I was reading the Quran, Surah 5 al maida Ayat number 100, it says, So fear Allah, O men of understanding, in order that you may be successful. A lot of atheists bring up the point of fear. You know, why does Allah Aswajal want you to fear Him? Because they have this strange notion that God is only love and that if He doesn't have only just the sort of emotion of love, then it can't be a just God. And I always found this kind of argument absurd. So, I was just thinking about how fear shows respect, okay? And fear also means you won't transgress so easily, and fear means you acknowledge authority, and a lot of people fear their boss, and yet they have the audacity to kind of mock and challenge their maker. And if you have fear, Right? I feel like you make less mistakes, and if you make less mistakes, then Allah the Magnificent is going to help you become more successful. For example, let's say you t it's after work, and okay, okay, St. Patrick's Day was yesterday. Unfortunately, Catholics have allowed the holiday to become a day of debauchery and drinking and people go to bars they piss in their pants they throw up get in fist fights which is ironically an Irish stereotype getting drunk and fighting but they don't act in any spiritual way that actually has to do with that day or lessons or any sh things that can be learned from that story right both literal and mythological and so they don't really behave right so let's say you were invited hey you want to go out for St. Patty's we get some green beer we eat some chicken nuggets we get some peanuts and we chill and we have a little kickback right you have a choice to fear Allah and obey the command that doesn't allow you to have intoxicants or you don't fear your law and you fall into sin and then something horrible happens, you survive it and then you ask a law for mercy. I feel like there's so many examples of how if we had fear of a law, we would resist something that could get us in some big trouble. Big key figure is Yusuf, Prophet Yusuf. May I be pleased with him and how he resisted a powerful beautiful woman right because he feared the wrath of Allah more than displeasing her and him getting landed in a jail cell right so this fear helps me I know in my life we, we all improve every day don't get me wrong but it does help me say hmm better not do that right lowering your gaze watching out, you name it. There's so many different circumstances that shaitan can tempt you to lower your guard, to, you know, say, oh, you can take on the big man upstairs. That's like what people say about God. You you can take him, you know, you, you he's not gonna, oh, you can just get forgiven, it's no big deal. It's just this or it's just that, right? There's these little things that erode at you and take away the fear. And once you do that, you have lost respect for the authority. Because, think about it. You Okay, I'll, I'll give you an example of, of restaurant life. A boss says, no employee is allowed to order seafood. No employee can have seafood as their employee meal. And if you get caught, you're fired. A lot of workers... They might sneak and try to find a way around it, but others will say, you know what, I really wanted to get
get uh, some new rims on my car. I really wanted to get that PS5. I'm not going to really do that. Nah, it's cool. I'm going to obey the rules. I can just have something else on the employee menu. Right? So people will fear their boss, respect their boss's authority, because they know they get their paycheck, which allows them to have stability and achieve their ends. So they obey and have that sort of fear and respect so they can get what they're after. So with us, Islam, it's like Allah's high above that, even higher, the creator of the cosmos, the one who designed our genes, our purpose, our skills, our shortcomings, right? And when we start to learn what isn't allowed, we have to be fearful of breaking that, right? For example, the more I learn about shirk, the more I watch what I say. Uh, concerning, like, I never want to utter a statement of shirk, and I have to be like, whoa, I'm very cautious, right? Whenever I'm in doubt or afraid, I say, La ilaha illallah, ashadu wa Muhammad rasulullah. I say that, and even a couple of my nightmares, I have said that, which I found amazing, because in a nightmare, I, I feel like you have no control over it. Some people feel like you can control yourself in certain dreams I don't know but I have said that in certain dreams and whenever I am afraid like if there's a noise outside in the night a car alarm goes off because you know there's robberies you never know when it can be you I've had in the past a home invasion uh, I had the second amendment so they weren't able to get fully through the window but I have had criminals you know try to do things before so I always have to be brave but, you know, I've had people show up in the past to where I live, when I lived at other locations and, you know, try to fight. They have like, you know, 14 people with them and weapons and they want to fight. And there's been times where I've fought and you have to be brave in the face of evil. There's been times I've been jumped by multiple girls, times where I had to fight really hard and had to be brave. So... Having this fear and dependency upon a law helps us to make better choices. And so, if we fear a law like a law knows, don't go to the club, don't go to this place at night, you know, we will make better choices that will help us. A law tells us don't dress in this provocative way, it only attracts trouble, and maybe you got away without any drama. Allah had mercy upon you. And then there's times where men might get too close to you. Even if you have a garbage bag, still, if you're walking in a shady area alone, you're walking while drunk, other things like that, you know, we're going to make a mistake that won't make us successful because it's going to cause us damage, right? So when we fear Allah, we are rightly guided and are able to navigate and get around traps, bait, sinkholes, right? And to endure, even if it's really hard. So when it says, you know, men of understanding, essentially, you know, people of understanding, when you really comprehend that the way to success is to constantly fear a law, and think, would Allah reward or punish me for this? This helps your ethics and personal choices. It's a lot harder to do when you don't have that sort of checks and balance. When I was an atheist, I was definitely more rebellious. You know, I was around more rockers, more nihilists and cynics and skeptics that were not very positive and... I made a lot of more mistakes. And when you have this sort of prideful arrogance, you make foolish mistakes. You didn't think beforehand. You acted without wisdom. Right? So if we want to be successful, we want to earn paradise. So if you fear a law, you will make like you will make less mistakes. 
and you'll be able to earn paradise more successfully. And success means getting into paradise. doesn't mean being a CEO or having seven PhDs. That's a dunya success, but the real success is the ahira, it's the hereafter. So if we want to be people of understanding, we have to have fear of Allah. And that's a mercy that Allah has given us. He's given us the the clues, you know, the, the clear signs to say, hey, if you fear me, you will be successful and you will gain more understanding because when you reflect, reason, and pause and think, hmm, is this going to bring wrath upon me? What are the outcomes that could come from this? It really helps you. Really does. You know? And authority, again, all authority is, is behind, it's in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when you acknowledge it, you show ultimate respect. If you had a boss, and you didn't acknowledge them when they walked in the door, and you didn't make eye contact when you were supposed to, and you start acting real disrespectful to your boss, I'm not saying you have to be a brown noser, but most of the time they'll fire you. They don't like your personality, you know? You're not as... You know, warm as they want you to be. Sayonara. They're going to kick you out. So Allah is different. Because Allah is the most merciful. Has infinite mercy. Forgives us each time we get prideful and rebellious. Allah knows our condition. Right? And our, and our bickering. And He knows that shaitan is there prompting us to sin and stupidity. So He forgives us. But we have to constantly acknowledge Allah's authority. And if we fear Allah, we repent more. And if we repent sincerely, we get forgiven for our sins, which will help us gain more success in getting into the hereafter. So, it all really goes into each other. And you are reckless if you fear nothing. If you always laugh in the face of danger, well, while your mouth's open... Someone might knock your jaw off. You have to have some caution. And if you fear a law, you have more caution. So this is really important because if someone's telling you to rebel against God's laws, right? That isn't going to bring success. If Allah has made something very clear, there's a reason for it. And we have limited understanding, so we have to do our best. But there's a reason for it. And we may find that reason out on the day of accounting. We don't know if Allah is going to tell us why every rule was laid down. But once we get into paradise, inshallah, we'll see it was all worth it. And how it was just something minor. And that obeying something like that was definitely worth it so that we could get into paradise. Because hell is something loathsome, something dark and lonely, something more horrible than we can imagine. If our nightmares are bad, hell obviously is going to be worse. And you can't escape a nightmare in your brain. You can't. Like you're, When you're in a nightmare and you're stuck in the sleep paralyzation, I've had that a lot, where you're paralyzed and you can't move, you're half asleep, half awake, and you're freaking out. And you feel like you're calling out for someone to help you, but no one hears you and no one comes. Sleep paralysis, it's very frightening. And I've had dark dreams, horrible dreams, you know? And if we can't escape that, and that is something almost of this realm, of this world, when people mock hell, these atheists, and they're like, do you fear it? You know, it's like they have zero fear and zero wisdom. Because they're haughty when they were once not in existence. They were once inside their mother's body. Now they're out and mocking God. And you have to look at that and say, they have no fear. They have no understanding. And they're not even really successful spiritually, mentally. Health-wise, some of them look very strange. They need wine. They need Adderall. They need some type of substance. 
you know? They think they're wise when they're high on drugs, rambling into their cameras, you know? Or they're drinking red wine on a yacht, you know, sniffing their own farts, talking about how religion is slavery, or something bizarre. So, fearing Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has so many different element, ele elements. Because fear also means you will get a punishment too. Because you can only fear something that can hurt you. And if we know Allah is capable of all things, right? Then we have to ask for mercy. And mercy can only come if there's the possibility of a punishment. There's mercy, not getting the punishment. And then there's, you know, getting your just rewards, right? So it all goes hand in hand. You can't fear something that won't hurt you. And Allah will punish you for what your own hands brought forth. Or if you fear Him and you sincerely repent, He has the power to forgive you and give you another chance. But it all comes down to fear. Why you should fear, how fear comes about, how authority is linked to fear, and how fearing something keeps you safe. If you don't fear a rattlesnake, you can get kind of reckless, you know? Now, if someone goes and grabs a rattlesnake, they fear the snake, they just have technique to grab it by its head, right? If someone wants to go in the back in the days to go get themselves a tiger, they fear the tiger, but they're brave, courageous, and going after it. But they still know the tiger, he has the eye. The eye of the tiger. They know he sees. He's blending in. And their fear and their heightened sense of presence in the forest while they hunt helps them initiate a successful hunt. Fearing the tiger heightens your senses and will make you more perceptive so that if he sneaks up on you in his silent, stealthy way, hopefully you'll hear him step on a twig and you'll get him. But if you don't fear him and you go in all haughty and arrogant, well, maybe the tiger is going to have you for lunch, right? So, when you fear something, you look out more. It means you have more respect. You acknowledge your smallness. And you act better and smarter, right? If you are a woman, you go to your car at night, you're fearful. You're more aware. You have pepper spray, you have your second amendment, you even have a dagger, whatever you need. You're aware that there's bad men who wait by cars and parking garages for women. And if you're in a tight skirt, high heels, you can't really fight as good. And if you know there's few people who work at the office late and you have no guardian, it's dangerous, right? So if you fear criminals more than you fear law, you have an imbalance there. Because nothing can hurt you except by Allah's permission, right? You fear the devil, but you fear a lot more, because the devil is a creation who's under the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do what you can to earn the mercy and protection of Allah, and doing so also increases the way in which you fear Allah because you know what Allah is capable of. You don't deny any of his capabilities, right? It's very interesting. So when I read Surah 5, Almighty number 100, so fear Allah, O men of understanding, in order that you may be successful. I just started thinking about all this stuff. What do you think, man?